Okay, in this video I'm going to start exercise 1b on page 17 of Fundamental Applied Mathematics. I'm not going to do all the questions, but I'm just going to skip and uh, do some of them. Alright, so we'll start with question, this is 1b, question 1, part 1. So what we're asked to do is in each case draw the vector and find its magnitude and direction. So, we have 5i hat plus 2j hat. So, in order to uh, to find its direction and magnitude, we do this. So, there is y, there is x, draw my unit vectors. Um, that's i hat, and that is j hat. Okay, so we are five units on the i, the x dimension, and two units on the, uh, the y, so it's about there somewhere. Okay. So, we can do the following. We drop our perpendicular. Uh, you could also drop the perpendicular this way. It doesn't really matter. Probably saying I hear theta. So next what we do is we get our magnitude. And let's just, or this is 5, this is 2. Let's look at those two vectors there. The 5i plus 2j is a resultant vector made up of the component vectors 5i hat and 2j hat facing that direction there like that. So, in order to get the magnitude, we just, well, the magnitude, I'm going to call this, we'll say, uh, uh, what do we call it? We'll call it alpha. So, the magnitude of alpha is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared is equal to square root of 29. So, this here is equal to root 29. So, how do we get the, the direction? Well, we use some trigonometry, Sakatoa. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tan is opposite over adjacent. So we say, well, we know that sine of theta is equal to 2 over root 29. Therefore, theta is equal to inverse sine of 2 over root 29. Well, and just, you might actually see this written somewhere, that's arc sine 2 over root 29. Arc sine and inverse sine are the same thing. You could also say theta is inverse cosine of what? It would be 5 over root 29 or I could say it's equal to inverse tan of uh, opposite over adjacent so 2 over 5 and you're going to get an answer of when you plug those in you're going to get an answer of what? Let's find out so we get 2 divided by root 29, and inverse sign that, and we get 21 degrees. Okay, just actually, just let's just show you something here. Divided by, let's go inverse 10, and you get the same answer. So that's how you check it. Three ways of getting it. So that's that one done. Next, I'm going to do part four. All right. So this one, I want to say that alpha is equal to minus 5i hat plus, minus, sorry, minus 12j hat. Alright, okay, I'm not going to draw my unit vectors this time. I'll just imply them. x, y, remember now, plus, plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, uh, plus, minus. So this one is minus, minus. That means it's in this quadrant here. You could use either angle, I'm just going to call this one theta. Drop your perpendiculars, and where they can be anywhere. You could drop this one if you wanted as well, it doesn't matter. And do exactly what I did above here. Now I'm going to just skip straight into it. This one is the opposite, therefore you're using sine. So this one, the magnitude, remember, actually we need the magnitude first. So the magnitude of alpha, the magnitude of alpha is equal to the square root of minus 5 to be squared plus minus 12 to be squared is equal to the square root of 169 is equal to 13 this is 13 then so we know that this one here is uh, we know that the magnitude of that is minus 5 magnitude of this is minus 12 remember because you have the two, the two component vectors here giving my resultant vector so this one here is uh, it is what? It is um, 
Let me think now. Oh yeah, sorry, you're going to go, we'll say theta is equal to what? It's equal to inverse sine of... Now, the question is, do you put in minus 5 or minus 12, or do you put in plus 5 or plus 12? And I will tell you that you put in plus. The reason is, you're just trying to find this angle here. Right, that's all you're trying to find. And if, uh, you, you, know, you know which direction it's going anyway, because you know it's in this quadrant. So all you're trying to do is find out the angle between uh, two vectors of magnitude 5 and magnitude 12, we'll say. So you don't need to do, use the negatives. Because if, yeah, if you put in the negatives, you're taking into account the signs and so on, and you don't need to do that. So just leave it as positive. And what you do, you go inverse sine of 12 over 13. Now you go inverse cosine of 5 over 13, or inverse 10 of 12 over 5. Now, the thing is, though, the thing is, if you had forgotten, or you didn't think of the fact that, uh, if you didn't think of the fact that, sh that you use the positive here, well, just check it. Do all the three, and if they're not equal, then uh, you know you've done something wrong. And the first place to start looking if you've done something wrong is the signs on the uh, the, diff the individual vectors. So in this case, anyway, sorry about that now. So in this case, it works out to be uh, 67 degrees. Like that. All right. So that should be pretty pretty straightforward. Next, going to do. Vi. This one is i hat plus j hat. Okay, so draw our Cartesian plane, our x y axis. Draw our unit vector is i hat j hat. So what do we do? Well, a unit vector has a magnitude of one. So there, one. 1, uh, and because it's 1 and 1, your resultant vector would be here. So I'm going to say that's that's alpha. What's the magnitude of alpha? Square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to root 2. All right, so then let's get the let's get the angle. So I'm just going to draw it quickly again. So take, just draw a triangle. Okay, so there's I'm going to call this, uh, so that's, well, that's 1, so is that, theta, and that's root 2. So theta is equal to what? It's equal to inverse sine. Inverse sine of 1 over root 2. Inverse cosine of 1 over root 2. Or inverse tangent of 1. And let's just see if what we get. So 1 divided by root 2 is equal to, and inverse sign that, I get theta is equal to 45 degrees. And do the same, 1 divided by root 2, inverse cosine that, and you get 45 degrees. So you know you're correct if you're getting the same answer for both ways. So that was pretty simple. Next, uh, number eight. So we have a half i hat. No, we don't actually. That's incorrect. We have minus three fifths i hat minus four fifths j hat. Draw your plane again. X, y i hat j hat okay remember the quadrants this is minus minus so it's down here that's the resultant vector it's made up of two component vectors this one here and this one here you know the magnitude of this one is in the i hat direction of minus three fifths and this one is minus four fifths i'm going to call this theta i could also use this but i'm not going to and then theta is equal to what? Theta is equal to inverse sine of. Now remember again, using min there are minus numbers here. It doesn't matter because you just use the magnitude. So that like we'll say if x is equal to minus 4 fifths, well the magnitude of x is equal to 4 fifths. How big it is away from 1. 
doesn't matter, it just go for it. positive. Anyway, so it's inverse sine of what? It's the inverse, so oh, I didn't get the magnitude. Uh, one second now, sorry, the magnitude of x. Magnitude is the square root of minus 3 over 5 squared plus minus 4 over 5 squared, so that's 9 over 25 plus 16 over 25 rooted. So that's 25 over 25, uh, which is 1, so that's 1. Okay, so you know the magnitude is equal to 1. So the it's inverse sine minus 4 fifths, sorry, that's plus 4 fifths over 1, inverse cosine of 3 fifths over 1. And let's just check if we got the right answer. Inverse sine of 4 fifths. You go to 53 degrees and inverse cosine 3 to 5, 53 degrees. So you know that you got the right answer because you've done it two ways and got the same one. So continue with exercise 1b. So we're still on question 1. I'm going to do one last one. It's going to be number 11 and it is 2 root 3 i hat minus 6 j hat so as normal we're going to do the following we're going to, I'm going to call that alpha so the magnitude of alpha is equal to the square root of 2 root 3 squared plus minus 6 squared that's equal to the square root of 4 times 3 plus 36 equal to square root of 48 is that correct? I often make mistakes on my adding and subtracting and so on 4, yeah, 3, yeah, 12 48, correct, ok so let's just draw it and get the direction that's x, that's y, that's your Cartesian plane otherwise known as your x and y axis i hat, j hat uh, we know that it's plus i hat and negative j hat, so it's, remember now, plus plus, plus minus, uh, minus minus, minus plus, so we have, what do we have? We have a plus i minus j, so we have a plus i minus j here, so we're in this quadrant, we can use, I'm going to use theta here just for the crack this time, what's its magnitude? Its magnitude is root 48, okay, uh, drop our perpendiculars, in that we make our component vectors, the component here, the magnitude here is 2 root 3. Sorry, it's not, that's, uh, sorry, is, is negative 6, this one is 2 root 3. And once again, in order to get the, the angle, you just use the magnitude of this. So the magnitude of this is 6, the magnitude of this is 2 root 3. You always just take the positives. And as normal, we go, what do we go? We go uh, theta is equal to inverse sine of inverse sine of 2 root 3 of root 48 is equal to inverse cosine of 6 of root 48 is equal to inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent 2 root 3 over uh, 6. Let's just check that out. 2 times root 3 divided by root 48 uh -huh. and inverse sine that theta is equal to 30 degrees just check it again with the cosine so we have 6 divided by the square root of 48 6 divided by the square root of 48 inverse cosine that and we get 30 degrees so you know I got the right answer so we're doing okay so far